Hi, Ishwarya. How are you? All good, sir. How are you? Very good. Thank you so much for joining the session. And we are currently in the first session of FIF, which is the Financially Independent Females. And I'm so glad that you being the first one here. Um, I've been talking to you for long. We've, we've, we have had a lot of interactions in the past. And today, uh, seeing you and inviting you here in this series, it's a great feeling. How are you feeling? It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking to you, sir. And it's uh, lovely that this initiative is coming up now. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Great. Now, this financially independent female, for those who may not know a lot about it or may not have heard about it, um, it's an effort where we want to bring people who have females, not people, but females who have done something which is courageous, which is fighting against the odd and establishing themselves in a so-called male-dominated society of India and have been able to become financially independent. Now, how does this financial independent uh, create a difference in those females? We will come to know, uh, obviously, by, by themselves, by talking to them. But it's our dream and desire to ensure and do whatever we can so that females get more encouraged towards their financial independence and they work, to, they work towards it. And you have done great things in your uh, personal career, uh, in your personal life and in your, in your career. And we wanted to bring the story in front of everyone. And i like to once again thank you for the valuable time that you're sharing with us. Ashura, why don't you give a brief about yourself uh, to the people who are watching you? So I am uh, Ashura, as you know. I have been uh, baking for quite some time now professionally. Uh, otherwise, uh, I was a postgraduate in ancient history, but uh, I decided to switch my career from uh, that to uh, complete bakery and pastry. I was uncertain about my career and uh, I didn't want to do too much of studies after my post-graduation. So, so this was something that uh, I was quite interested in somewhere in between. I decided to take it up and uh, here I am telling my story to you today. I have my own bakery also, uh, running my own bakery by the name, it's Bakelicious. And I'm currently present in uh, a town called Mahu, which is near Indore. And, but I'm planning to shift uh, from here to a, neck, a bigger city now. Great. Now, uh, guys, please don't uh, understand that if you do not like to study, you can become a baker. That's not <laughs> the point that she was trying to tell you. Right. Yes. <laughs> so baking also needs a lot of understanding of how ingredients work together, the chemistry of it, and a lot of it. That's also yeah. study only. But that, that's a personal, uh, that's something which I was, in, like, it interests me. I, I, well, post-graduation, I did in ancient Indian history. So that was just reading books and books and books and all of that. But this is here, you're doing something practical and, you know, putting your own creativity into things. So mm. that is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> cool. Interesting. So, uh, Ashore, tell me something about uh, your baking journey. How did it start? Okay. So in back in 2015, uh, when I was finishing my post-graduation, that's that's the year I decided to switch my career from. I was uh, working as a con web content writer as well uh, after my graduation. So I decided my I, I need to change my career to a bakery and a pastry chef. Like I said, after graduation, I was clueless what to do. And uh, I one thing was certain that I didn't want to do any MPhil or any PhD further. So I decided I uh, started working as a web content writer for a startup company in New Delhi. And uh, but that also didn't. And within six months of that job, I got bored of it. Then I worked as a freelancer for, uh, for the same company, but that again didn't really interest me. But uh, I was one day I got one uh, topic, very interesting topic to write about uh, when I was working as a freelancer, and it was totally different from the kind of articles I was writing. The articles that I was writing was mostly about competitive exams and uh, college admissions and all of that. So this topic, which was the rise of culinary education in India, that was the topic. And it was here I was not writing about what colleges, what admission and all of that. So um, it was, you know, uh, I wanted to uh, do research as part of all my uh, articles. We, we had to do research about the topic and then formulate an article. So then I thought, I, uh, but my 
I remember my entire day went into researching and it was the most interesting research that I had done uh, after joining the college, after joining this uh, uh, company. So I've completely forgotten about the timeline of my article. I just kept on reading, reading because I was, as and when I was reading, I was getting more interested to know about baking and about uh, culinary education and all of that. So my knowledge uh, for the industry was that uh, to become a pastry chef, you have to do hotel management for three years and that's it. But then after reading, I realized that now there are courses that you can, you know, do diploma courses you can do the from which you can become a pastry chef and you don't have to actually go into all departments of uh, hotel and, you know, do hotel management. So then I read about this um, one institute in New Delhi, which was offering a diploma in uh, bakery and pastry. and um, Everything looked very exciting. The curriculum and all of that looked very exciting. And then I scrolled down to see the fee structure, which was uh, 2 lakh rupees for one year. So I I knew that there's going to be a problem uh, arranging for the money in the family at a short notice. So still I decided, I said, let me at least talk to my parents about it. So now imagine this. My parents, they were sitting watching TV on the bed. And uh, I just casually walked in, you know, tried to tell them what uh, what the article I got to write about and what is the research I did and all of that. They were they were watching TV. They were just paying attention a little bit, but they were not fully paying attention to me. And then I blurted out, you know, I said, this is this is a course I want to do, and um, I want to become a pastry chef. So then I saw them, both their jaws were on the bed. They were looking at me like this, what? I said, uh, ha, so I continued. I said, you see, this is a course and uh, I want to do like, it's a two lakh rupee course. Uh, sorry, uh, you have to uh, pay for it. <laughs> Again, total utter silence. My <laughs> dad was still looking at me. So then he finally broke the uh, silence and he said, um, Acha, okay. Okay, there's going to be a little cringe money, ka thoda hone wala hai, but are you sure you want to become a pastry chef? So I said, see, I'm not sure, but you know, this this uh, article made me uh, very interested in the topic and uh, I have been, you know, very interested after a very long time. And it did excite me because uh, immediately after my post-graduation, I was, uh, my relatives, my family members, my neighbors, everybody I went to, they always asked me this question. What do you want to do next? Ab kya karna hai? So all of this made me very conscious. And I started backing out of these social gatherings and parties because everybody, they just wanted to know what I was doing. And I myself had no answer to it. So then my I said, you see, yeah, this is what I want to do now. So dad, then mom, dad, they suggested that you take up baking classes and you see, test the waters and see that if you are really interested in doing that. So I, it was a fair suggestion and I took it and I said, okay, uh, us time pe, uh, Neeta Mehta ma'am was taking classes uh, uh, in New Delhi and they were at a discounted price for defense personnel. So I joined different classes about breads and all of that. Um, but then one day, uh, I think we had a uh, class on classical desserts. So Neeta Mehta ma'am herself happened to join in that day. And we were four to five people, uh, out of which one was a homemaker. She enjoyed baking for uh, her family. One was uh, a professional, working professional, but she was pursuing her hobby, uh, baking. Ki. And then one was a chef who was uh, working in uh, Australia. And then there was me who was clueless what to do. So then uh, Nita, we made, I think tiramisu we had made and ma'am just simply asked one question, like what is the variation that you can do with this uh, uh, tiramisu? Everybody started pitching in their suggestions and ideas, you know, they will do this, we'll do that. I was listening to all of the answers, but what most I was excited and I realized that time that, you know, this is the group I want to be a part of, where people are talking about baking and, you know, it's the crowd that I feel very comfortable in. So I, this time I was very sure I went back to my parents. I told them more confidently this time that, yes, I want to do this course and I'll be a very sincere student and I will not miss college and all of that. I uh, told, convinced them to uh, do, uh, to pay the money. They Even my parents and my grandparents, they both pitched in for the money. And I, I joined the uh, July batch of the same course. So then that's how my baking journey started. And today I see people, I mean, Trust me, if back in those days I would have told my parents I want to become a cook, mm. they would have killed me. 
<laughs> you were lucky that your parents were receptive to uh, your idea, or maybe it's the gender difference uh, yeah. that made them more receptive. I have no idea, but yeah. I know it for sure. If I would have told them that I want to become a cook, they would have kicked my ass and throwed me out of the home. Yeah, बिल्कुल. That's the notion, like, and you see the hotels are run run by male chefs, ah. Huh? Mostly, so, yes. Mostly, ha. Huh? So then, why is the difference? I don't know. And uh, people don't want to choose so, it by. It was not looked as a career. Yeah. Until our great Sanjeev Kapoor. Anji, ha. <laughs> he did those dramatic changes in this entire industry. Yeah. Until then, I don't think. शेफ एज अ कॉन्सेप्ट एग्जिस्टिंग इन इंडिया और उसको हम हलवाई बोलते थे बैकग्राउंड और Did you have any baking uh, background before you actually thought about it? No, actually, uh, not professionally, but uh, like uh, all the women in my family, my starting from my nani, my dadi, my chachi, and my mom, they were all interested in baking, and they have been baking for families uh, get together, birthday parties, and all of that. And they are experts in their own field. Uh, one is specializing in cakes. One is specializing in uh, cookies or breads, and one is in uh, key, uh, quiches, tarts, and pies, and all of that. uh in fact uh, it was uh, my mother was quite active in learning uh, to bake and she used to take uh, classes also uh, to learn and learning to bake in fact all her uh, the most of the utensils that i have in my kitchen today are have been passed down by her so her aluminum pan purane wale with the system I, they're still running in pushteni you can call legacy, it legacy has been passed on legacy has been passed uh, so and i have her uh, uh, notes on working with sugar and purane notes from some workshop she had attended and uh, also her recipe book which uh, for, she, she collected recipes so all of that is with me now and uh, until quite recently she was baking uh, for my fam for my birthdays my parents and uh, my father and my brother's birthday but now she's when i started doing it professionally she is everything she's just handed over to me kare ab ye tum sambhalo types na but now she often on enjoys to bake and uh, lately she is uh, into baking uh, with healthy substitutes uh, doing diabetic friendly and all of that because we have some problem of diabetes now in the family so now she is into doing that and apart from uh, apart from that um, you know, my uh, uh, Yeah, that's the. She's cut down to baking. She's given everything to me now, and but I keep troubling her because whenever there is a problem for me, if I have to decide something for my menu, she I go to her and uh, trust her instinct and trust her expertise and experience in the thing. So I think it's a talent that was uh, baking was a talent which was passed down to me by all the women in my family to me, and right. yeah, that's it. Right. I had a different aspiration. Uh, until tenth, and then eleventh, it changed, and then after twelfth, it got changed. So all yes. those things kept ha- happening because of first, initially the family, uh, yeah. whatever they created in me, and then yeah. society. All of this yeah. uh, kept changing my desires and dreams. And I'm sure something similar may have yeah. also happened with you when you were there in school. You may have thought something different, and then things took its own shape, and and you finally. Mm-hmm. found your interest in baking and you are a baker so tell me but i mean what were your initial dreams what did you want to do and how were you i mean how did this change happen so uh, i have studied in uh, schools various schools like uh, across the uh, across the country uh, in places like uh, bias which is in punjab uh, mahu which is near indore then amdabad uh, pokran which is near jaisalmer then uh, uh, jodhpur uh, and then new delhi so all of this i was a very fairly but average student in the school i was more interested in arts and craft and sports rather than academic syllabus but um, till again till uh, about i came to uh, in high school 
उससे पहले तो कुछ बिल्कुल भी कोई आइडिया नहीं था कि मैं व्हाट आई वांट टू बिकम एंड यू नो दिस इज समथिंग आई वांट टू डू एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट इट इट कैप चेंजिंग लाइक सम डे आई वांट टू बी समथिंग एल्स सम डे आई वांट टू बी समथिंग एल्स बट इन हाई स्कूल आई इट्स आई थिंक देयर व्हेन आई डिसाइडेड यू नो दैट आई डोंट वांट टू डू आई डोंट हैव टू डू डोंट हैव अ प्रोफेशनल करियर बिकॉज़ आई विल बी गेटिंग मैरिड so why was this because it was i was in an i was in an all girls school in my uh, high school and it it was an environment where um, you know everybody all girls belong to rajasthan so my caste bra- background also has a role to play here my uh, i'm a meerte rathor from rajput clan in rajasthan and uh, girls as we know in rajasthan are married very early and they don't really get a chance at a professional career but now the situation is changing massively this i'm talking about uh, 12 13 years back in school so um, and they are brought up with this this notion that some families uh, bring up their uh, girls in such a way that you know you will be getting married only and you won't necessarily have to do uh, any professional work so somewhere in the family, family every mother is telling her daughter yeah. bete tera to shaadi ho jane wala hai ha so matlab mindset was created kuch bhi kar le matlab wo to hai matlab that's so i i also thought that okay my parents will get me married you know maine kya karna hai professional career bana ke na i didn't even think matlab seriously about that although my situation at home was totally different my parents they wanted me to finish uh, education my mom she said finish your graduation post graduation uske baad jo karna hai karo dad and uh, uh, no matter the family pressure of getting me married my dad was always like you know she has to work, uh, she has to finish her education start working start earning and then only she'll settle down but you know at that time to apne dost zyada advice unki zyada achhi lagti hai unko lagta hai ki ha parents ko to kya hi pata hai matlab na so then uh, i also thought that you know just let it be i, I will not do uh, anything uh, related to whatever i don't have to think about any of my career and all of that but uh, then ye yeah, hai so but today i am a post graduate in ancient indian history that's my highest qualification and um, i am th- becoming a home baker or becoming an entrepreneur was nowhere in my childhood dream or nowhere close to my dream my mom in fact had a dream of opening up a bakery but uh, now she's living <laughs> uh, that dream through me and uh, you know and that's it that's sort it i didn't really uh, Didn't even imagine that I, this is what I'm going to be achieving in my life, but I'm very happy. The uh, destiny has its own way, and here I am talking to you about my <laughs> baking journey. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> so between um, you leaving that uh, uh, degree of uh, history and mm-hmm. then taking up those uh, Nita Mehta courses, yes. um, and today owning up the bakery, this journey, what all changes have happened? Uh, did you join some corporates did, did you have a working did you work under somebody did you gain experience or you did from everything from scratch by yourself how did this happen uh, uh so before joining before the this gap between joining the baking industry i was working with this online company uh, mm-hmm. corporate me to wahi experience that i have working 6 7 months in a, a web content uh, as a web content writer with a startup company called collegedunya.com but uh, after that that i told you i left within 6 7 months i left the uh, left going to the company and working i worked as a freelancer also same thing i was doing at uh, home but then once i got into this uh, college thing uh, in my for my baking uh, college i left that job completely and focused only on the baking and pastry so, okay yeah. any 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 internships that you did in the baking uh, under some chef did you work how, how did it happen not uh, no but after i joined the industry it was through um, uh, uh, this international institute of culinary arts only because the diploma had a uh, four months of industrial training so okay. i kind of knew that you know we are going to be doing industrial training for four months with any uh, all the five star hotels who had come in for placements so i got selected in obrais luckily and <laughs> then uh, four months i did industrial training with them uh, immediately when uh, when the training was ending i there was a vacancy opening up in the bakery uh, as a, a permanent uh, employee so then i applied for the job and i worked as a commi chef with them commi is a rank given to the junior most uh, member of the kitchen so mm-hmm. i worked joined them and worked for 2 years and then i resigned okay and then you started your own i started my own yeah 
Nice, nice, nice. When you took that decision of leaving your studies behind and taking up baking as your career, mm -hmm. your parents, you have explained how did they support you and what did they do for you? But what about your friends and other outside people or relatives? Mm -hmm. Didn't they come back and, and tell you that you've gone crazy or, yeah. or they were all okay with that? <laughs> Of course, <laughs> every family has that, you know, because they, they thought, you know, they got to know that I'm going to be working in a hotel. So they're like, oh God, this is late night. They kept telling my parents. My parents were a shield for me. They took all the beating, you know, they were like, uh, everybody came in, they used to tell them, how will it be, 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 all of that. But now, uh, <laughs> now they are the same people who support me like anything. They are the first ones who will be, you know, commenting on, uh, commenting good, uh, positive comments on my uh, posts about baking and all of that. So I think it changes uh, somehow. But when this happens and all of these people, and all of the people who are talking negative or criticizing yeah. the, uh, the the desire that you have expressed or whatever, um, it doesn't it fill a lot of negative thoughts within yourself and and you start to question yourself whether I'm taking the right step or not. How yeah. did you manage all of that? See, uh, it's difficult to deal with all of that. But uh, But one thing is that you have to. I was sure. Uh, like I told you, after a long time, this was something I was excited to do, like go to college every day, learn things. So they, I was new to this industry completely, baking professionally, ba uh, going to the hotel and uh, hotel industry. I had no clue. So I just took it as a learning, everything as a learning. I kept, I just blocked out my family's uh, thinking. I said, Ki, hai. Jab hoga, when I'll become famous, probably they'll, they'll know, Ki, okay, uh, she's doing, she's doing something. She knows what she's doing. Like. So then I, I decided to, it was difficult at first because everybody, you know, just don't do that. Just get married. And why do you want to uh, work so late? Uh, just focus on yourself, you know, get married, get married, get married. So I said, okay. My parents were like, my father was especially like, you just keep working. Let people talk what they want to talk. They'll, they'll, all, they'll be talking high praises of you when you are, uh, when you're uh, famous. So just, you know, just keep working. So That's there so were good. days, but some words used to hit me very hard, but and I'm I'm very short tempered. My father was very patient and like, okay, 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 just relax, calm down, keep working, keep going to like I took one each day, like keep going, keep moving forward one day at a time. Just mm -hmm. keep blocking out because people will always say good things, bad things, they will they will have any something to say, but it's you you have to answer to yourself. So I think that's what kept me going. Okay. You are highly motivated, right? Yeah. What keeps you so much? How did you motivate yourself? Do you have somebody who motivates you, like your mother, father, or somebody else? Yeah. Or is it self-motivation that, that you bring in for yourself? And if if it is so, how do you manage it? It is uh, self-motivation, yes. Because uh, I think this baking is a business, is a hobby which is born out of love you you are choosing this uh, career for yourself so uh, it really uh, i don't know how to explain it because uh, it did motivate me to just to get up everything i had a purpose to you know uh, fulfill orders uh, greet people uh, see their feedback see their expressions when they are tasting my products and all of that so that kept me going my uh, like i said negative comments will keep coming it but to, you have to build up parents' ka support and all of that is okay. But yourself, motivating yourself is a big challenge. And mm -hmm. uh, focusing only on that and just tune everything out. Just, you know, uh, keep yourself, ki, haan, hai hoga. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. That um, Self-motivation was uh, more, I think. Because if I had, if I only gave up, nothing else would matter. So if you have to give me some tips about, I mean, this is what I did with myself to motivate myself. And uh, if you have to give me some tips, mm -hmm. uh, could you lay down one or two tips of how to self-motivate? Keep up with the competition. Keep up, uh, keep seeing what other people are doing so that you get different ideas out of what they are doing. And uh, just keep a very positive environment and uh, set realistic goals. I will. I would say that. Uh, don't say that I'm going to be opening a chain of bakeries 
just because, just you when you're starting out don't think that think about one one particular customer one order then 10 customers and so slowly keep building uh, that way this has been something my go to mantra also yeah when you're doing something focus on one thing at a time yeah and that's about it mm. don't spread too thin mm. on yeah. multiple things yeah. where you are and you get exhausted and you are not able to achieve anything that's true stay happy but just do one thing mm. most of the times what happens and especially in the in the in the era of social media mm. we keep looking we keep scrolling and we see people doing so many things yeah and, and at the same time and at the yeah. same time yeah. right come on nobody is as a juggler mm. and don't become a juggler yeah right when you can easily handle one thing finish it and then do you eat all your three meals together no oh, yeah. you eat breakfast at breakfast time and then lunch and dinner oh. you don't eat everything together and then say rest of the day okay no you're not camel yeah. camel can do that but and and we have to understand our limits so i have learned this in my life that ek kaam kar rahe ho na bas usi ko karna hai you got to yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, पैसा किसने दिया आपको बेकरी डालने के लिए कहाँ से लाए पैसा? Parents ही हैं देने वाले अभी मेरे पास कहाँ से आएगा पहले? But uh, initially, uh, uh, all the investments were on uh, these uh, ingredients and uh, simple equipment and uh, packaging. बस ये पहला three pandas was कि इसी पे focus करना है. When I started the business. Uh, then initially, then I started getting orders, more and more orders, and then I depending on the money i expect because itna bhi paisa nahi tha ki main ek saath hi pura ek pura khol ke bilkul bakery ready kar du waisa bhi nahi tha so i went with the flow as in money was coming in i started investing slowly slowly to other things this was back in amritsar before this posting i was in amritsar so there i started little bit but here i fully pledged jo mera pura bakery ka business hai i have a shop also now so yahan pe i had saved money from obroys from my previous uh, posting previous orders and all of that uh, and then of course parents to the uh, soft loan jo aap kehte ho they help me with the money and uh, then slowly but now i have been able to pay salaries rent and uh, salary to my employees rent also and then i started investing also in some sip so that you know i can upscale the money later when i need it oh that's really fantastic yeah. So not only financially independent, you are becoming financially literate also. Uh, yeah. But that's great. That's great to know that you're financially uh, making yourself literate. And, that also came. Uh, I started doing after. Me, ko bhi pehle I had no knowledge of all of this. So then, uh, my fa- uh, father's friend is into uh, this uh, investing and all of that. So I told them very simply. See, this is the money. You will. You have just explain it to me in a very layman term. Ki kahan invest karna hai? What is the best time to invest? and i started doing it and it was required also because stagnant money is making but there is no going to be any development in that so i thought you know just start investing little by little and then we'll see later on i think everybody needs to follow it and that's a great advice actually and especially coming it out from from a female mm-hmm. and all those females who would be listening to it mm-hmm. my serious advice take this advice very seriously so i'm sure you have already spoken about how family has supported you and uh, your odds were were there any other challenges that you had or you've been into while growing this bakery business mm-hmm. any other thing that anything else that worth people noting there there were challenges yes uh, first was to uh, first and foremost when i started the business here in mau i will talk about here in mau because this is where i started it you know with a full bang so initially getting people to taste my products was a big challenge because i had done my menu trials uh, my recipes were set my menu was set and i knew that my product will t- is tasting best but to get that product out for people you know motivating people to buy the product uh, i knew that they once they, they will taste they will come back to reorder but that initial hurdle to get the thing uh, out was a bit of a challenge uh, luckily i had good neighbors who, who wanted to order and then you know slowly started uh, uh, spreading the good word it took some time then i also had uh, put in pamphlets in the newspapers and uh, i boldly mentioned homemade bakery products everything everywhere i mentioned homemade 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 
because it was still the time of covid till about last to last year there was still remnants of covid going on so people were in two minds to buy from outside so that helped uh, quite a bit then uh, second major uh, challenge i would say was uh, dealing with the customer uh, <laughs> because every customer is different every their uh, preference is different their budget is different different and um, each one of them will think you know my my order is most important than the other one so uh, and i'm a very short tempered person i hate it when people don't trust my uh, instinct or my vision of the order so uh, that took a lot of time and i can't tell you the number of time i had to gulp down my anger and put a patient smile and talk to the customer explain it to them very patiently you know and if i couldn't take a order uh, i had to subtly say no and all of that so that was another uh, challenge to deal with the customers but now i have become a master in handling those customers just keep a patient smile on your face be uh, be warm in your greetings and be honest with them uh, whatever is going wrong with your with their order just let them know honestly because i think they appreciate it uh, best and if it's getting delayed be tell them if it's going to be one hour you tell them one hour only don't tell them ha ha aadhe ghante mein aa raha hai types na so what you were saying is correct actually just to please the customer yeah. give a false commitment or just to keep the customer happy over committing it doesn't help it doesn't help it doesn't help yeah. it rather it's a double sided sword that's going to hit you as well yeah, yeah. and uh, another challenge was uh, i would say no matter how much you plan on pen and paper right you no matter how many how many times you reworking your business model you will always be <laughs> faced with some problems every day there yes. were every day there was something or the other i had to face my either my staff was not coming in last minute they'll say i'm not coming uh ingredients running out at the last minute or you have to deal with delivery personnel explain it to them where do you have to deliver and all of that sometimes power failures and then your orders are mounting up so all of this but all of this had made me very strong uh, and i was prepared for the next uh, challenge so you know all of this ultimately i could i could have a lot of solutions to uh, what could go wrong and i had uh, solution to everything then later on so i would suge- uh, suggest the new uh, bakers also that you know take these kind of challenges as a he- uh, head on and don't be demotivated yaar ye to ho nahi raha hai ho nahi raha hai karke na just don't get worked up like that that was the main three challenges so, i think i've been in this industry for quite many years now yeah. and this has been the primary reason of mm-hmm. people not being successful mm-hmm. that that no giving up too early yeah giving up too early yeah. so, so that has been the most prominent mm-hmm. reason of females not been succeeding in the career which is which has a tremendous growth in the yeah. coming years yeah cool um that's been great so while everything is said mm-hmm. uh, you you reached where you wanted somewhere where you wanted yeah now what keeps you motivated money <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that uh, the kind of trust people have put in me for their orders that keeps me motivated because uh, touch wood there are good reviews there are positive reviews they would want whenever they want to order they'll think of me uh, so that i want to be able to provide the best of the best service to them and that is what keeps me motivated you know I just get up in the morning bake every, and because the reviews are so good i i like to experiment and you know present new things to them also so that is customer satisfaction is me keeping me motivated how important do you think uh, i mean having a good bake is definitely important yeah. uh, because what taste good uh, people will come back for that but how important do you think the person the business owner Mm. Uh, to be pleasing communicative uh, smiling always listening and then uh, then keeping all of these things in mind and then um, so in the conversation you heard mm. i have my child birthday on this and this day whatever whatever and yeah. keeping that in mind retaining that information and then using that information at the right time all of these things how does this how much importance t- all of these things play it is it is very important i i uh, took it as what i thought of it as uh, if i am the customer what would i like to see in the business 
I would like to see how confidently, first of all, he's talking about his career, uh, his or her profession or bakery or whatever it is. Uh, so that will give me some kind of, if they are not confident nahi about their own products, so then you will be like, okay, TK, he's not too sure. Then uh, I, that is why I was confidently talking about my business, however, no matter how small it was or big it was, I kept on talking about it confidently about it to everybody, be it my relatives, be it uh, in any gathering. I was talking about it confidently. <clears throat> Secondly, I was very, uh, listen to what they're saying. You know, they'll give you hints, <laughs> certain hints like, you know, oh, I was not feeling well or something they'll say. So probably you can, you know, go out of your way and make a small, uh, whatever, so a small box of cupcakes or something. Just say that I thought of that you were not too, I got to know that you were not keeping well. Do that kind of little bit things to keep your customer uh, invested in you. They, they will go and buy and all of that is okay. But uh, making customer relations is equally important than, you know, uh, if you, if, in the baking industry or food industry, I feel it is a must. And uh, yeah, keep your uh, customers. They are obviously God, but they are, they are always right. But, you know, they deserve that kind of uh, attention as well. So. True. It's not just the food business, any business. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is investing that trust in you that they're pulling out the credit card and sorting it for you yeah they deserve some respect some different treatment yeah and 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 that relationship mm -hmm. is what will keep you in their mind for a longer time That's true. and when they see the competition mm -hmm. and, and you still retain that spot in their mind yeah. even if their competition they 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 see the advertisements of competition. Mm -hmm. The retention is is there. You yes. will always get this customer back to you. Back. That's true. It's, it's very important. Yeah. I, and I, especially I, negative reviews also. I would say negative reviews. Sometimes you just say, "Okay, this ko to kya hi bata hai, isko nahi bata hoga." But no negative. Not everybody will give you a negative review, and not everybody will have a uh, in some sense in those negative review. Mm -hmm. But some will actually give you hidden suggestions or advice that what you can do best, uh, better mm -hmm. for the next time. So take all of that into your, uh, whenever you're uh, t making the next order, take all those points in consideration, I would say. True. So I always tell, uh, I mean, anyone that I'm talking to giving feedback, I tell, look, feedback is a feedback. Yeah. You don't have to get uh, mm. demotivated or uh, start to feel on high, start to feel high about it. Yeah. It's just a feedback. It's just a feedback. Whether you can do something about this feedback or cannot do anything about this feedback is up to you. Yeah. But when you get a feedback, mm -hmm. open it, uh, I mean, listen to it with open mind. Yes. Right. And acknowledge it back to the person. Mm -hmm. Note it. Let me see how I can work on it. Yeah. Right. Not every feedback you would be able to accept and yeah. change yourself, mm -hmm. but at least give that feeling to the person that his or her feedback was important was important was heard yes yeah. it is heard so that people feel happy to give you feedback and because of their feedback you have the chance of getting better yeah that's true yeah cool that's that's that sounds so cool so uh, when you've already learned baking with um, Nita Mehta ji and, and uh, many other people and then you work with Obrais and then lot of other things that you've done what brings you to abcv i i, I know you've done courses tons of courses with abcv so what brought you to ABCV? so uh abcv i had joined just before covid was about to hit us uh, we were in amritsar that time i just got posted to amritsar and i wanted to start a little bit uh, uh, start taking orders from home but uh, i had some i think one month exactly one month free time uh, with me to get things started and I came across one uh, social media I, I think it was a Facebook post or something to learn uh, do a 30 days home baking challenge so I said uh, okay I have time uh, I can do this I, although I had learned everything in the diploma and all of that but I thought hey, why not just pick up this course because uh, for me no education goes waste something or the other will always help you so I thought, okay, might as well just do this uh, challenge and see what, what is it about. But once I joined it, I, there was no going back for me. I wanted to do many courses with ABCB because uh, starting from the content, 
the recipes, teaching methods, support system, everything. It was the best choice, I feel. And I was very hesitant to uh, invest money in these uh, workshops because you hear things on baking communities, you know, itna itna kia, and they're not giving us recipes. They're not doing the, this, that. So I thought, I don't know, but this was a good choice. And till now, I have no complaints with uh, ABCB. Fantastic. So, uh, I mean, that's actually makes me feel high to hear about it. But whatever you learned with ABCV in terms of yeah. baking and the recipes and techniques, whatnot, yeah. uh, how did it help your baking journey, your knowledge? How did it help? So uh, this is a very minute uh, thing, uh, but very crucial. I would say that uh, in the hotels, with, I'll take example of a cake. In the hotels, we used to do bulk baking. Bulk baking meaning doing uh, baking at a very larger scale. So uh, uh, cakes, we were not making one or two cakes. We were making 10, 20 cakes at one time. Uh, then we were using pre-mixes to make the cake. All we had to do was just uh, put the uh, pre-mix into the stand mixer, add water or oil and just, you know, uh, batter is ready, bake it. and So work was getting done faster, but the taste, it just <laughs> wasn't up to the mark. So this was a crucial lesson I learned with APCB that, you know, each ingredient has its own property and a different mixing method. All of this focusing on of all, all, all of this will make your product taste better. And taste was something I was not willing to compromise on with my in, in the business. So uh, no matter how many cakes I had to make in a day in my, in my own home bakery, I decided not to work with premix at all. And certain things that like uh, then uh, ABCB also gave me the confidence of uh, recreating my own recipes. Like for assignments, we had to make up our own recipes, work with different ingredients. And, you know, uh, there was a challenge always. So uh, that also helped uh, in increasing my menu uh, fantastically because I think it's a great USP to have if you have your own recipes. So that was another thing. And uh, again, then gluten-free baking. It was uh, strangely why I wasn't not it wasn't taught to us in diploma. I don't know <laughs> because we really had we didn't have in one section also of gluten free baking. Not even vegan desserts or nothing. There was nothing like that. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to work with the gluten free or vegan products in a hotel also. So here I got to learn why why is it important and people are becoming conscious of gluten and uh, vegan and all of that. So this also really helped me in uh, expanding the menu. So that is why I was, that is all I would like to learn about from the minute, minute little things you learn from uh, ABCD. And so that's, that sounds uh, music to my ears. <laughs> um, so, so all of it, let me just understand, did ABCB help you grow your business? Was yes. it instrumental in doing that? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, uh, I would, again, uh, like I did home ba the uh, 30 days baking challenge, Immediately after that, COVID hit us, so I couldn't really do a lot of uh, baking from home. But then I uh, learned about this home baker's business challenge. There was another uh, course. And in that, I got to know the importance of a business plan, how to market your products, how to deal with the customers. And uh, so before I could start full-fledged in Mahu, I had a foundation of everything ready, and I could build up on that. So... ABC <laughs> and I now that I meet everybody first name is ABC. I said, have you have you heard about Amit sir and Sonia ma'am? I said, please talk to them and then you talk to me. What do you want to do? So, so things like that, you know, uh, really uh, it helped me. ABC really helped me in all of that. Super, super. So uh, apart from the financial part of the business. <laughs> The other part of the business is the customer satisfaction. Yeah. In both this aspect, what do you think the contribution ABCB would have made in your life? Was it 1%, 5%? What do you think the contribution it would have added? I would say a major part would be on the business front and uh, how to deal with customers. And uh, see, because recipe, how to, uh, what is the theory of the recipe and all of that, that I had learned in diploma. But what I didn't learn is the, how to run your uh, bakery, how to market the products, how to use social media, all of that we didn't learn through the diploma. I, I can, I think I can safely say that there is no other uh, possible solution available 
than your pricing calculator and it has really really helped me in pricing my products better i used to think jaise jab sikhaya jata hai already ki itna aap ingredient la rahe ho that price this price whatever <laughs> divide that and multiply your uh, profit and that's your done but there is so much more to you know this pricing the thing there are so many factors that go into it so that was a big big help Uh, from ABCB to understand the, your pricing better. I have personally heard a lot about uh, the taste of your bakes. Mm -hmm. um, so, just curious to know uh, what percent of customers uh, do you have repeat customers? How many percent of customers repeat themselves? I would say about uh, so in Mau, what the situation is like. it's mostly populated by depends uh, personnel and about 80% of my clients are from the army and uh, remaining 20 are the civilians i mostly very less i cater to the civilians mostly it's the army personnel only and uh, where the place i have my shop is called the army war college they run three courses out of which uh, two courses are there on a uh, two to three monthly basis remaining one course is there for an entire year so these people from two to three courses they are very regular to the shop because they are from that younger generation age so they have the, i think they have the ability to digest such products also and they come in they frequently would come in to buy all of that but the remaining that one year course jo aata hai they are ordering only for birthdays and uh, catering or get togethers and all of that uh so and remaining the posted people the settled people in uh, mahu they also think of me when first if i am available then okay then otherwise if i am not there if i can't take up the order then they go to the other person so safely i would say 75 to 85 they will come back or, or they will pass on uh, the same people who are on the course they will pass down their my number to the other course coming in so they will say you have to go to the shop and all of that so probably i think it, it, that is working out nice so we can safely say um, india ka baker kaisa ho ashwarya rakho jaisa mau ka to abhi tak yahi hai mau mein i have achieved that name uh, but it's a small place so uh, but thankfully i'm getting uh, orders and getting good feedback from people and some people they come for this one course then they after a few years they come for the another course also so they still remember yeah hum aaye the aapke paas it's very nice to meet all of them and still remember to come to me only for orders So that's a great achievement i would say for me what's your plan for your business for next okay i i like i told you i'm planning to move out of mau now and uh, i'm i belong to rajasthan jaipur and i'm planning to uh, settle my start my venture there now and i want to be able to have a small little corner i want to like a diner i want to open so that uh, i can bake everything fresh uh, in my oven and uh, make use of in house products like make jams and delicious everything to be made uh, in house i think a series like uh, uh, chef's table on netflix uh, series like that inspire me to have my little you know whatever space little corner and i want to be do, doing that but slowly i also want to be uh, stepping away from the daily operations of the kitchen i want to have a team which is doing that work i just want to do like uh, one odd big orders i would like to do myself but i want to travel the world and uh, see different bring in different culture different cuisine to my menu and that's my plan i don't know how successful i'll be but that's the vision i have of uh, continuing the business uh, like this manifest your dreams it will happen yes <laughs> that's true <laughs> so what according to you is the importance of being financially independent and especially for a woman women um, financially independent in today's time and age is must women should be able to uh, earn her own income and handle her own exp expenses because it will give her uh, it will allow her to you know pursue her dreams uh, without relying on anybody for money and then it will always serve as a protective measure for be, uh, from being financially abused uh, when they are dependent on somebody they are uh, they can be under control or coercion but uh, if they have their own income they can you know avoid this risk of being con uh, controlled and they have a great greater control over their own life there's a lot of thundering happening in mau <laughs> so 
tool is. I and what impact it brings it to the confidence level and the decision making abilities of the person. Uh, confidence level for sure because you think for yourself now whether if you're getting money and uh, for your own hard work and that's the different kind of happiness uh, you you get be it working from home working from uh, office or uh, you know making your turning your passion into a, into a career having money received for your hard work it will uh, there's this different kind of confidence uh, altogether and it has helped me for my big, uh, business making decisions as well because i myself know what is the kind of money coming in what is the profit i'm earning i know where to invest more where to where to cut back and i don't have to ask anybody you know uh, where the i don't have to think where the money is going to come from i know this is the money where it's coming from i know how to uh, what next to do for my business what's the next big thing i want to do where i want to just cut back all of that <laughs> Fantastic. You, you've gained so much of experience and now there are so many people. I'm sure plenty of people watching this, they're entering into the business, baking business or the baking industry. Yes. What are the three must to do things according to you for them? Uh, for them, them I would, uh, there are a lot of things to start, but top three, which I feel that, you know, is a must. First is a uh, book, uh, bookkeeping and account keeping, account managing. So whatever minutest bill that you uh, doing an expenditure on, keep make a note of it. Make a monthly note or daily note. Make a note of it. Uh, divide it under different categories. If you want, you can do wet ingredients, uh, marketing, and all of that. Just divide it and keep a note of it because it will help you uh, understand where you're uh, putting money, where uh, what kind of ingredients you're spending surplus on, or if you can cut back on that. So all of that will help you make a budget for the next month. And I was very bad at numbers <laughs> with accounting. So my mom helped me with uh, all of that. I used to pass on the every bill, every online or offline bill I used to spend. I used to give her the bill. She used to make a note of it. And by the end of the month, we are able to analyze, you know, where we can make better changes. Uh, then also make a note of the uh, like the money you're getting from the orders. Every day, ho gaya, weekly, ho gaya, it's up to you, but make a note of all of that because you know which uh, you also get to know which customer is coming back to you again and again with bigger orders and all of that. So it's important to keep a note of that. Secondly, I would say uh, keep your vendors, do a proper research of your vendors because not every vendor will give you, give you everything. And it's important to uh, make a relation with the vendor as well, because uh, it's important to create trust for him also and for you also. So that you, you, I, what I did was I was very uh, open about my business. I told them honestly, said this is what I want to do and where will I get the best price and all of that. So they helped me with some uh, wholesale prices. They uh, gave me references of other people who could provide me that. So be honest and open about the thing. So and. Uh, then stick to them, you know, keep going back to them only uh, until and unless they start creating a problem, stick to them. So they will also be able to have that trust. You know, that person is coming to me only for orders and you will gain a trust that this person is give, going to give me good quality ingredients every time. So that was one. Uh, another and I would say, uh -huh, and one was a proper, uh, uh, lastly, keep your uh, uh, recipes in order. I feel it's the, uh, what home bakers usually do uh, recipe they don't fix it you have to fix your recipes because it will uh, help you in your in pricing your product also better so what i did was did my menu trials and all of that pricing and everything i could make but i uh, wrote down all recipes in format uh, saying like for example cake half kg cake 1 kg cake your personal notes do all of that do kind that kind of uh, keep a note of all of that so that you, you can train your brain you know uh, kitna bhi aap samjhalo, kar, you can train your brain to remember thousand and thousand of recipes but you don't really have to because technology is good nowadays so you can you know uh, make use of that lessen the burden on your mind and uh, make a note just anytime you have a problem open that page and then you know that what you're doing is right or wrong i tell my employees also by uh, employees they're like Ma'am, I'll show you a photo. If anything at least make a note. Because you must have a note. Don't keep thinking, I've put so much, so much, because then you forget. Some days are not happy days in the kitchen and you're not personally, you're not okay. So, you know, there are a lot of things going on in your mind. 
so make and don't let your business struggle because of that so these three must things you should be doing so some great mind said the strongest of the mind is weakest than the weakest of the ink yes <laughs> okay so so three advice is great but three things that they should always avoid avoid yeah avoid saying uh, yes too much to orders to customers uh, i think uh, saying no is absolutely all right uh, because you know that uh, saying no to people who are constantly asking for freebies uh, constantly asking for massive discounts and uh, sa samples every time you can confidently say no to them it is absolutely okay and let you let me tell you by experience because uh, a customer who who feels he wants the best for his or her family will always uh, consider your price and all of that he will give respect to that if uh, there's somebody who doesn't want matlab theek hai usko lagta hai ki next match hai mil jayega so he will always argue about you know why you're not giving me why not giving just say no and uh, say no to Uh, orders which you can't handle. If you think if you think you can handle an extra order, well and good. But if you can't, just confidently and politely just tell them no. See, I I have my orders full uh, for this uh, day, and I cannot cannot take it. And just you know, or you if you can offer any best other solution, do that. Do that to them. Uh, but you are just overworking yourself, neglecting your health, and all of that. It's not worth it. So you know, just. Uh, you can say no to them and then avoid using cheap products and equipment because uh, quality is was uh, it's the most uh, important thing that uh, people look for in a home baker and if you're taking out quality from your products then you are just you're taking out the crux and work with good equipments because you don't want to be uh, held back ki bhai 4 mahine baad hi mera mixer kharab ho gaya ab ye kharab ho gaya so don't do that matlab uh, Start slow, start little, and slowly start growing in to your. Uh, and mm. please, uh, I think I cannot emphasize this, this this as much. Price your products better. I don't know for what reason. I'm sure you have also seen it. It's become a trend in within the home bakers only to start reducing their prices and give, start giving quality products. I know for a fact they they're definitely going in a loss because you can't. Uh, and it's very heartening to see because you put in a lot of time in yourself you have invested so much uh, money in yourself to learn the skill you have brought the product you have done so many things to get your business started and then you're downgrading your own uh, effort only so i think it's high time that you know home baker start really <laughs> working on uh, this uh, pricing calculator with the pricing calculator it's exhaustive at first uh, at first you will feel are bhai kya kya karna hai kya kya karna hai but it will in the long run it definitely helps so i'll tell you uh, ashwara something very interesting here mm -hmm. and i see this trend of rat race of yeah. reducing the price and selling it to the customers mm -hmm. with the intent of getting that customer back or from a different baker and making their own but tell yeah. you one thing if you could do this the other person can also do that ah. this customer was not loyal to the baker earlier baker cannot be loyal to you yeah you cannot think that it is your safest customer mm -hmm. uh, set that you would deal with yeah and if you are sacrificing your margin mm -hmm. to stop working go to mcdonalds work there yeah McDonald's. that's true <laughs> that's true yeah. why run a business yeah yeah if you are running a business you need to ensure that you make enough money you yeah. get peaceful life and you are able to create employment for other people too and That's pay true. their salaries also because That's business true. is not just about making money yeah. there are a couple of reasons for business one is creating value for the customer yes okay yeah. second ensuring that mm -hmm. you are providing the best of the customer support and the product to the customer among others yes third you are able to create employment for others hmm. that's true these are few important thing that i feel as a business i would always look forward to uh, so if i start reducing prices mm -hmm. the entire notion of creating that business is lost 
and and i feel it's just time those people will not be able to survive yes true they'll spoil the market mm -hmm. but they'll not be able to survive and unless you make money which mm -hmm. as you rightly said it's high time for bakers to yes. understand the importance of keeping a bare minimum margin not going yes. below that mm -hmm. is i think people will understand and 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 gradually. when you start losing out motivation also i feel yes. because then you start feeling ki are itna kar rahe hai itna aa nahi raha hai itna ho nahi raha hai then you start giving up on yourself only why because your pricing is not there. okay you have to check so many things and i would suggest people if you can just join the course and you know see the pricing calculator uh, it's it's actually really really helped me and uh, because i was thinking you know the this customer this baker is doing this i should reduce it no when you get to do things you you realize then you then you are saving money then you enjoy the business also na so the yes. baking and all is okay but when you know that you are earning and then you, your employees are happy they are growing along with you so then you feel happy every your team is moving moving forward with you then you feel happy otherwise then you feel keeps struggling only ki nahi aa raha hai nahi ho raha hai types na so i think uh, pricing is a must it's become it's become uh, every every other baker and uh, home bakers who are uh, uh, offering courses also at a very discounted rate uh, <laughs> i don't know why it's happening but it, it's really important for uh, us to look into the pricing of the products yeah so uh, i mean i mean everybody will have their own lenses to look at the things yeah, uh, of the situation but i would rather prefer to deal with customers who like apple products versus people who would like cheaper products of 5 10000 rupees of a mobile phone because uh, they wouldn't really understand the value that apple is providing that's true let's not deal with that customer that's true so yeah. saying no which you initially said yes. gives the ability to say no i believe in saying no to the customers that i feel are mm. not right for my business mm. that's true that's uh, what i wanted to say actually you know uh, they will if they don't uh, value your product he is not your ideal customer at all yes so uh, for that you should be knowing your target audience also like what kind of customers you want to serve to fantastic fantastic it's been uh, quite some time that we've been talking and it's been like uh, i think i can i can i can go on and on and on endless uh, <laughs> well, like, you know, it's, it's, so it's like i said that's always a good nice to have a conversation with you sir It's, uh, uh, so it's so refreshing and enlightening because uh, very few people. So I would have uh, spoken, met, shared mm -hmm. uh, with maybe ten, twelve thousand bakers uh, mm -hmm. in the last seven eight years. Yes. Some people are able to understand the value mm -hmm. in between, and they're able to use that and do something for themselves. Very yes. few people. Rare breed. You're one of them. Right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so glad uh, that you've been doing great. Um, and I, I like to sincerely thank about you spending time with us, giving your precious time, taking it out from your whatever bakeries that you could have done and and satisfied mm -hmm. your customer. Then you took your time out. Thank you so much for that. Last any any last minute word mm -hmm. for <laughs> people to improve their baking skills. uh just uh, never stop learning uh, if you think you know it all and you've mastered it all you haven't because uh, this business uh, this baking industry has been competitive and is continuing to be so at a very fast uh, pace and um, there are a lot many trends coming up i am sure our viewers will be agreeing with me when there are trends popping up here and there on social media every time and the heed is following them so keep learning keep uh, reading blogs keep uh, doing keep doing courses which will upgrade your keep uh, upgrading your skills and uh, you know blogs magazines tv shows whatever interests you keep up with the industry and always and don't you know don't just uh, keep keep enjoying i would say because this is a industry like i said it's born out of uh, it's a career that you're choosing out of love and out of uh, passion so don't be the day you stop feeling happy and you feel you are burdened by it i'm telling you you will never be able to grow in the industry so i think it's important to keep yourself motivated and there are bad days in kitchen always bad days in the kitchen bad reviews everything will happen but most importantly you have to take all of that in and just keep growing 
so keep growing keep learning and keep enjoying that uh, that's i would say <laughs> sundar ati sundar thank you so much ashwari ji for your time and i'm thank sure you. people will have a lot to learn from uh, whatever you have said so far um, thank, you. thank you and you have a good day now i'll thank take you bye bye thanks bye now